Hi, and welcome to our video from Iton Moat in Kent. I really hope you like what we put together. Don't forget to click like if you do, and why not click subscribe so you don't miss any of our future content. And again, we're in our corner of England, the county of Kent, and about six miles east of Seven Oaks. And in this video, we're going to be looking around the grounds, the gardens, the house, and of course the moat itself. So without further ado, let's go and explore Item Moat. So Item Moat is owned and operated by the National Trust. And I'm going to start off today's video by exploring the grounds. And I'll be popping up little labels so you can see where we are. So one of the attractions of Item Moat is its grounds and gardens. And throughout the video, I will show you what you can expect to see on your visit. And I'll also pop a link in the description so you can see how much it costs to visit Item Moat. And as you can see, you're positively encouraged to sit back, relax and take it all in. To the north of the manor house is the North Pleasure Grounds, the Discovery Den and the natural play area. So to answer your question, is Item Moat family friendly? The answer is yes. Item Moat is really well maintained and it takes you on a voyage of discovery and one will discover as we make our way back towards the manor house and you discover things like the stumpery. And as we close in, we then find ourselves strolling through the orchard, planted out with many different varieties of apple tree. And then next you come across the cutting garden, full of wonderful flowers and a selection of fruit and vegetable grown on the estate. As we close in on the manor house, we then come across the formal garden. And now time for a few facts about Item Moat. Now it was built in around about 1340-ish. And its last private owner was Charles Henry Robinson from Portland, Maine, who bought it in 1953. In his will, he left it to the nation and it passed to the National Trust in 1985. And we enter via the central courtyard. And the first room we will visit will be the library featuring a painting of Item Moat by none other than Sir Winston Churchill. The library was decorated in the 1950s for the last owner, Mr Robinson, in a rather tasteful grey and gold colour scheme. You may also notice the occasional teddy bear sitting around. This is to keep the little ones amused. And no, I didn't play along. The next room we come across is the outer hall, an anteroom leading to, you probably guessed it, the Great Hall. And is that another teddy bear I spot? Damn, I am playing along. And the Great Hall is very much of a Tudor Stuart period. In fact, wandering through item moat is like stepping through time, different periods. This almost looks like a scene from Downton Abbey. And could this be from upstairs downstairs? Each room creates a scene, sets a tone for how it once was. Again, as you step through the building, you come across parts of different periods. It's no time at all before you find yourself strong into the crypt. We now journey upstairs, and the first room we come across is the old chapel, a very simple and sparse affair. And now another of those teddies in the Victorian bathroom. Once again, a very sparse affair. And now we come across the new chapel, 
built in around 1520, so I guess that makes the old chapel very old. And now the drawing room. And as beautiful and as tastefully as this is decorated, it just doesn't feel homely to me. What do you think? And now leading us to the last room of the house is the Apple Store. Nope, I have no idea why, but that's what it says on the map. And this leads us on to the billiard room. Once again beautifully decorated and wonderfully maintained. Another slice of history. And we step out into the great courtyard again. And I need to point out the dog kennel which is a listed building in its own right. It's worth looking around here to imagine the dignitaries that have walked through this cobbled great courtyard. And stepping through the gatehouse, we find ourselves on the stable courtyard. And I know we haven't seen the moat yet. Don't worry. We're getting there. It'll just take a moment. There's a couple of things I want to show you. For example, shh, the secret garden. Now, you don't think I'm going to show you it. It is a secret after all. But we can wander along here and enjoy the beautiful plants in these borders. And if you take a fancy to them, don't worry, there's a selection available at the gift shop. Now I'm going to show you this because it's not a secret. It's pretty elusive though. The enclosed garden. Now you've been good and you've waited long enough. Here's the moat around the manor house. And if you're really observant, you may start to notice raindrops in the water. This is a British summer's day after all. But that shouldn't put you off visiting Kent. As I said, Here's that gift shop. I think this is our first visit to Item Mo, and we've had a fabulous day. Ah, for sure we could have done with blue skies, but we feel like there's history around every corner, and we love it for that. Is this a good enough reason for you to visit, Kent? Let us know, we'd love to hear from you. So that brings this video to a close. I really hope you enjoy what we put together here. And if you do, give us a like, we'd really appreciate it. And why not subscribe so you catch more of our adventures. Thanks so much. Stay safe, stay well, and happy travels.